Hello and welcome to Merienda. My name is Rene Alvarado and I am here in my home gallery and studio in San Angelo, Texas. I will be hosting guest speakers to share their experiences in the arts and humanities and the role that they play in the commonality and vitality of the human condition. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'm, I'm a journalist with the San Angelo Standard Times, which is part of the USA Today network. And, and normally I get to hide behind a keyboard and, and formulate my thoughts and then, and then put that out there. And so this, this is a little bit different for me to be sitting almost literally in the hot seat. There's a fireplace behind me <laughs> that, uh, that I get to uh, uh, speak about what happened in DC and some of my impressions about this. I am excited though because this is a story that I don't often get to share with, with people. My normal beat, as we say in journalism, I, my normal beat is crime. I, I, I write about murder and arson and murder and, and <laughs> assault and murder. <laughs> And, and this was something entirely different for, for me to discuss. Back, back in May, my news director, uh, news director, Jennifer Guadarrama, asked me into her office and said, there's this amazing thing that's taken place. We have art from the San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts that is going to make its way to Washington, D.C. Would you be interested in covering that? And I said, of course. I've, I've been a resident of San Angelo for, for 25 years, and this was something that I had never heard of. And so I, I leaped at the opportunity to go to, to, to uh, Washington. I'd never been there also. On May 11th, two people, Jeff Curry and Rene Alvarado, drove for 25 hours, about 25 hours, from San Angelo to Washington, D.C., which is from West Texas to the other side of Virginia. And they stopped four times to refuel and once to eat. And they did this during a rainstorm. I mean, originally they were going to uh, take turns sleeping and, and rest up, and they weren't even able to because this 15-foot U-Haul carrying all of these priceless works of art were being jostled back and forth. And so they had to they, they had to stay up and they had to make it into DC. But they arrived on Mother's Day. About two days later, I arrived, they started unloading all of these remarkable pieces of art into the home of Stavros Lambernides. Now, why did this happen? Back in February, Stavros Lambernides became the official European Union ambassador to the United States. And as it just so happens, his next door neighbor is Mario Castillo, who is a San Angelo native who has been an ardent supporter of, of this town and all things San Angelo for, for decades. And he, he happens to live next to the ambassador. So on, on just a, a neighborly visit, he was inside the ambassador's residence and noticed that, well, the, the, the walls were a little bare. They're certainly not the way uh, Rene has, has his house set up with, with art everywhere. And he found out that the ambassador either did not have access to art or, or was interested in, in, in getting art under certain conditions. And Mario Castillo had the idea of supplying art to the ambassador's residence. And this was rather remarkable for several reasons. It normally doesn't happen this way. I mean, since the Kennedy administration, art has been shared with foreign ambassadors and it's been displayed in the private residences of ambassadors from the United States. But to have American art in the private residence of a European diplomat, it doesn't happen. And this is something to mention as something we can all be proud of, all of us who are here from San Angelo. 
because it wasn't the Guggenheim or the Getty or the Smithsonian, it was the San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts. And so art from this area is now in one of the private homes of, of Europe's top diplomat. Well, at any rate, I arrived and watched them carefully unearth sculptures out of, out of packaged peanuts and take out paintings where some were small enough to be carried one at a time. Others had to have two people and a third person who had to carefully help them navigate up staircases to get into the get into this residence and within six hours they had installed these beautiful pieces of art all throughout the ambassador's living room. This is a place where some of the the most influential people of the world are invited to. I mean it's it's one thing to have a meeting at someone's, pri at someone's public office. It's another thing to be invited into their home and, and to get to experience things that they value and care about. Well, the European Union ambassador and, and his wife were, were very kind enough to allow Texas culture and art from this area to appear into their home. And, and it's remarkable. Never been, it is one of the most cosmopolitan cities I've ever I've ever experienced. There were people from all over the world wherever I went. There were people speaking in Spanish, English, French, uh, Mandarin. I, uh, I, I was given the opportunity of staying in, in, in various hotels around Washington and, and for whatever reason I decided I wanted to stay in a hostel. Was, this was a few blocks away from DuPont Circle and I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity to stay in one. So I, I stayed in a hostel with six, with six other people and uh, it, it, was, it was mixed gender and these people were all over the world. There was a lady from Brazil who was there to study art. There were two people from Germany, uh, two college kids from Germany who wanted to experience the art that American has. And one person in particular, uh, this was all on bunk beds, my, my uh, bunk mate from the top, he was from South Africa and he had, an, he had his own studio, but he decided that he really wanted to see what American art had to offer. And so he came to Washington, D.C. And so we had, I was in a room with all, with these people from all over the world who were excited about the possibilities that America had to offer and who wanted to experience its culture. And I think that's noticeable, uh, notable, excuse me, because this is what San Angelo was essentially doing. This is what we can put a, a, a feather in our cap and be proud of. We're part of a larger narrative now. People from all over the world were going to Washington, D.C. to experience a different culture. And that is exactly what San Angelo is affording people in D.C. to do through its art, through a unique way to do diplomacy. Our art that was at the San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts is now on display in one of the most prominent homes and a, or at least one of the most prominent diplomats in DC. At the heart of diplomacy, you have to know something about the people that you are going to form an alliance with. You have to be able to find something that you value about their culture. The ambassador had a choice of really any museum in the world. He could have he could have chosen larger museums. He could have chosen uh, museums from New York, from Boston, or he could have chosen places that had European art. In fact, there was an East Coast reporter who called Mr. Castillo and, and essentially asked him, what's a San Angelo? What, what, what makes this place so special? And what this, what this reporter was essentially asking is why the European Union ambassador didn't want more European art inside his home. Why, what makes San Angelo so special? Well, there's a lot of things that make San Angelo special, frankly. But the European Union ambassador wanted art from Texas. He didn't need a mirror. He didn't need more European art to look at. He wanted a window. 
and the San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts was more than happy to provide him one. And from that window, the ambassador can see what our culture has to offer. San Angelo now is taking part of a greater narrative. And the narrative that I saw is, is one where people are using their energy to build things and to learn about other people. We have this moment where we are reaching out through art to find that which ties us all together. There was one particular uh, painting that Ambassador Lambernides found to be particularly meaningful when I, when I was able to sit down with him in his office at K Street. It was a painting of, of, of three women who were just sitting on a bench experiencing life. And for those of you who, who don't know, Lambernides has dedicated much of his professional career to advocating women's rights around the world. And so this particular piece of art deeply moved him, he said, because he looks at this art and he says, what are these, what are these three people, these three women thinking? Are, are they happy where they are? are? Are they in a career that they enjoy and that they're finding some satisfaction in? And from there, he can take that and like anyone who stares at art, apply that into his his day to day and what he's going to take with him uh, in in the rest of his career, and that's something that happens with any art that you look at. There's there's gorgeous art all around Rene Alvarado's studio, and I'm very fortunate that uh, I'm very thankful that we're able to do this in in his studio today. I mean, what 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 does the art in this room uh, say to you? What what can you do to take what you see here with you after today? Well, thanks to the San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts, people will be able to experience that all the way to Washington, D.C. And so what's going on here in our city is, is, for those of you who don't know, it's being valued, it's being appreciated, it's being looked at, and it's, it's an amazing thing that's going on that we are able to own and offer not only to the people here in our town whenever we visit the museum, but to people now from all around the world. So San Angelo is contributing to the narrative of finding things that connect one another as opposed to things that divide them. And I was very thankful that I was able to be there on that particular day and watch them install this art and, and see the reactions from people who were who are experiencing it for the first time. And um, I'm, I'm very thankful that our city in particular was the one who was able to find this new way of doing diplomacy, who would have thought, in which uh, our cultures and what we value most are now able to be in, in such a wonderful place.